Today's story is one that was so disturbing and so horrific that it made history in the United States, specifically in Texas. This crime would go on to change the laws around how this specific type of crime would be handled within the United States legal system. So stick around because we are about to begin. Okay, let's go. Late in the evening, on June 7th of 1998, a man by the name of James Boyd Jr. was walking down one of the streets of a small town known as Jasper, which is located in East Texas. 49-year-old James was walking because he suffered from a medical condition known as epilepsy. And this condition sometimes prevents people from being able to operate a vehicle safely. But James's epilepsy wasn't the only thing that was keeping him from driving that night. Even if he could drive, James had spent the entire day that day visiting and drinking with his friends and family. And so, because of the alcohol that he had consumed, he wouldn't have been able to drive home anyway. As he was making his way towards his home, walking down the street that was lit up by street lights, he could hear a vehicle approaching from behind him. So, without looking back over his shoulder, he just moved over to the side of the road and continued walking. And while he was walking, he was anticipating that this approaching vehicle would drive past him at any moment. But to James's surprise, when the vehicle reached the point where it was about to pass him, the vehicle did not pass him. Instead, it slowed to the point where it was driving right beside James as he walked. James, realizing that this vehicle was slowly driving beside him as he was walking down the street, stopped walking. And when he did, the vehicle came to a stop too. At this point, James had no clue of what was going on or why the driver of this gray pickup truck was doing what he was doing. But when James looked over at the truck, he could clearly see that they were three white men sitting inside the cab of the truck looking back at James. They looked friendly enough, and so when they offered James a ride home, he didn't really think much of it. James knew it was a bit of a hike to get home, so he accepted their offer and hopped into the box of the truck. Once James was in the box of the truck, the driver once again started driving down the street. Inside the cab of the truck, Sean Barry, Lawrence Brewer, and John King had been looking for something to do that night. And so, when they seen James walking down the street, they got an idea. All three of these men had spent a portion of their past inside a jail cell for various small crimes, and that is where Lawrence Brewer and John King had met and become friends. The two men seemingly bonded over their shared affiliation with white supremacy believing that people of other races were inferior to their own race because they were white, and they believed that being white made them better than everyone else. This belief would often result in violent attacks against minority races, and sometimes even led to hate crimes. John, in particular, had several racist tattoos all over his body, including things like a black man hanging from a tree, Nazi symbols, and the word Aryan pride, as well as an insignia representing a gang of white supremacist inmates known as the Confederate Knights of America. Sean Barry, however, was not involved with white supremacist groups, but he was a white man, so Lawrence and John didn't seem to really care about his lack of a superiority complex. After driving for a little while, Sean pulled his truck off of the road, pulling into a clearing just outside of town, and then he brought the pickup to a stop. It was late, about 2.30 in the morning, and James was confused again. Jumping down out of the truck box and walking up to the men who were now also outside of the truck, he asked them what was going on. James had expected to be taken home like they had said, but instead they were now standing out in the countryside for no apparent reason. And as they stood there bickering back and forth, the words that were passed between James and the three men slowly began to escalate in their level of aggression. James wanted to go home. And these three men were being evasive about what their plan was and what they were all doing out there in this countryside clearing. Finally, James had enough and demanded to know what was going on. But the men didn't answer him. Instead, they attacked him. Together, Lawrence and John started beating James, violently attacking him with their fists and whatever else they could get their hands on. It was not really clear what had started this fight, but it is widely believed that Lawrence and John had taken James out of town for the sole purpose of beating him up because James was a black man. They attacked James using anything they could find. Tools out of the box of the truck, beer bottles, a baseball bat, and then finally one of the men grabbed a can of black spray paint and sprayed James in the face with it. 
After this unprovoked, violent attack, as James laid there on the ground, the men were still consumed with the adrenaline and the hate that was running through them. And so, they took a chain, wrapped it around James's ankles, and attached the other end of this chain to the back of Sean's pickup truck. The following morning, a motorist driving down Huff Creek Road pulled over to the side of the road, just beside the African American cemetery that was located on the edge of town. This person got out of their car and had a quick look around at the area where they had stopped and noticed something lying on the ground just outside the gates of the cemetery. Curious about what this might be, the person went over to get a better look. At first, they thought it might be a wounded animal that had been hit by a car or something like that. But when they got closer, they could see that this was not an animal. This was something much worse. After attaching the end of the chain to the back of Sean's pickup truck, the men hopped back into the cab of the truck and headed out onto Huff Creek Road, dragging James behind them. For three miles, James tried everything he could to prevent the road from ripping at his body, but it was no use. He simply could not get away from the road long enough to prevent it from wearing down his flesh. As the truck drove erratically down the road, James' body slid from one side of the road to the other, oftentimes entering into the ditch and sliding through the grass until finally, James slid into the ditch on the right side of the road. And this time, instead of his body sliding back out onto the road, his body collided with the sharp edge of a culvert that was protruding out of the ground. When James' body hit the edge of the culvert, it is believed that at that point, during his torture, he was still alive. However, the impact of his body hitting this culvert resulted in the complete removal of his right arm, his shoulder, neck, and head from the rest of his body, killing him instantly. Wear marks on James's body indicated that during the time he was being dragged, he had done his absolute best to hold his head up so it would not drag across the pavement. But he unfortunately was not able to spare the rest of his body from the brutality of being dragged along the pavement for three miles. Backtracking down the route that was taken to drag James to his death, the police recovered a multitude of items belonging to James that had been scattered down the three mile stretch of road. His personal belongings, cards from his wallet, pieces of clothing, blood streaks, pieces of flesh of varying sizes, totaling approximately 81 pieces of evidence were recovered. The police were able to identify the starting point of this vicious attack, and in that clearing where the beating of James had started, they found tools laying all over the place that had led to the identification of the three men who had attacked and viciously murdered James. Since it was no secret that Lawrence and John were well-known white supremacists, it was determined by state police that this murder was without a doubt a hate crime. Sean, Lawrence, and John were all tried and convicted for James's murder, and during the trial, Lawrence tried to claim that James's throat had been cut by Sean before James was dragged, but the evidence provided by James's severed head proved otherwise. And then, in a letter that was written by John, which was meant to be received by Lawrence, John was clearly proud of what they had done and said that he realized while committing the murder that he might have to die. He said, regardless of the outcome of this, we have made history, death before dishonor. In the end, Lawrence and John both received the death penalty while Sean was sentenced to life in prison. Sean is eligible for parole in 2038, and he received a later sentence because he had actually tried to unsuccessfully de-escalate the attack on James. And during his trial, three African-American men testified on his behalf, vouching for him that he was not a racist person. Sean was also the only one of the three men who expressed any remorse whatsoever. Lawrence was executed by lethal injection on September 21st of 2011, and John was executed on April 24th of 2019. Lawrence Brewer and John King were the first white men to be sentenced to death for killing a black person in the history of modern Texas. In 2001, James's lynching by dragging led the state of Texas to pass a hate crimes law, which later led the United States Congress to pass the Matthew Shepard and James Boyd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act commonly known as the Matthew Shepard Act of 2009. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you got something out of it, please be sure to like and subscribe, maybe even toss a comment below, and I will see you again later.